Roy Halladay, loyal, hardworking, dependable, as solid a citizen as you're going to find in baseball. Tonight, he's rewarded with one shot at a 20th victory. This is the final home game of the year here at Rogers Center as the Blue Jays conclude a series with the New York Yankees. Toronto will finish with a winning record, but they won't finish with a postseason spot. However, Roy Halladay shoots for a mark tonight. His 20th victory could be the result of a win tonight for his Blue Jays. Roy makes his 33rd and final start of the season. And we'll bring it to you from a bit of a different perspective. The TD Canada Trust Comfort Zone right beside first base. The action will be close, and we're glad you've joined us. I'm Jamie Campbell along with Pat Tabler. And there's been some bad news recently, Pat, with the injury to Sean Markham and the team missing out in the postseason. But today, some very good news. Yeah, Cito Gaston gets signed for a couple of years. The coaches are going to be back. And any time you have that stability going into the offseason, I think that can only help the organization. These are the guys who are going to be making the decisions for this ball club club in the offseason so I think it's a good good move somebody joked with Cito that it only took him 11 years to get an extension with the Blue Jays but he has one in hand and had this reaction it's something that we've been talking the, the last couple of days and uh, we got it done so uh, you know it's it's it's, it's great for me uh, uh, I'm, I'm happy to be back uh, this like I said this is the city is like my home I, I've lived here for 20 years and I always come back here and it's nice to be back in the, in the and, and the Blue Jays, you know, Blue Jays uniform and uh, doing the things we like to do. So Gaston will be with the club through 2010 at the very least, and his numbers have really shown to improve this club since he was hired on June the 20th, and it helps when you've got a guy like Roy Halladay going for yeah. you. One shot at 20 wins, and that's what Halladay is doing here tonight, and if he can do that, he'll pretty much match what he did back in 2003. If you can kind of compare the two seasons for Halladay, I think there's some arguments that can be made that in 2008, he has pitched better. If it only he could have gotten a little bit more run support. Roy Halladay would have a lot more victories. He'd be going for 24 or 25 instead of just 20. Halladay's like a fine wine, sure to be appreciated. So too, for that matter, is Sam Cosentino. Oh, isn't that nice? Thank you very much, Jamie. And it's only appropriate that we find ourselves here just beneath the wine bar at the HSBC Club VIP. The starting assignment for Roy Halladay is not as easy as it seems. Pitching on the final day of the home season part of the schedule, guys tend to have their distractions lie somewhere else. Roy Halladay, once he throws that first pitch, everyone else around him is going to have to have their concentration at its best in order to get him win number 20. He will not have to face Hall of Famers like Alex Rodriguez or Derek Jeter tonight as Roy Halladay searches for his 20th win of the year. We've got it for you next on Sportsnet. The Jays on Rogers Sportsnet. Brought to you by General Motors and all its divisions. Thursday, September the 25th, and last day of the home season. Hard to believe it's gone that quickly, and I don't know what kind of pull you have, Pat, but thank you so much for uh, getting us the TD Canada <laughs> Trust Comfort Zone for the uh, final broadcast. Hey, I bank there. That is my bank. Well, there you go. And, <laughs> there you uh, go. Just for protectionary measures, I brought the ball glove. Because you just never know as Roy Halliday takes the hill looking for win number 20. Let's take a look at the lineup he'll face tonight in the final home game of the year. And there haven't been many changes from last night. No Alex Rodriguez, no Derek Jeter, no Johnny Damon for that matter. But Bobby Abreu was in as the designated hitter hitting third. His grand slam and extra innings last night put an end to any victory attempt by the Blue Jays. So the Yankees have won seven straight coming in. Their lineup is brought to you by Holiday Inn Hotels. Enjoy our free high speed internet. And for the second time in his tremendous career, Roy Halliday is hoping to win 20 in a single season. His statistics are presented by the new generation of Nikon Coolpix digital cameras featuring XP image processing. Little Nikon's big sensations. 
Visit Nikon.ca. Looking for that first 20 win season since 2003 when he had 22. He has pitched really well versus the Yankees this season. He has won four of his five starts. He has won both of his home outings against them, posting an ERA of a microscopic number 169 over 16 innings against the Yankees here at Rogers Center. The scouting report for Halliday, well, he's a true ace. Everybody knows it. He really sets the tone for the whole pitching staff. He is a true number one. He has thrown at least six innings in 18 consecutive starts. You want a guy who goes out there and gives you innings, it's Halliday, at least six and 18 consecutive. And he's a whip master. He is number one in the American League of whips. That's uh, uh, hits, uh, walks plus hits, divided by innings pitch, which is a stat that a lot of fantasy people use. His is just 1.06. A very good one is 1-2-1-3. One, one, Halliday is the best in the American League in that department. Fred Gardner settles into the batter's box and Halliday is ready to go. It's time to play some ball here at Rogers Center. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Jamie Campbell with Pat Tabler and Sam Cosentino. As Gardner steps in, leading off for the Yankees, he's the center fielder tonight. You can tell from those stats right there, has not had a whole lot of at-bats here in the big leagues. Spent time in the minor leagues. Did have 27 multi hit games while he was down in Triple A. Has a little bit of pop, 12 doubles, 11 triples when he was down at Triple A. His game is speed. And he shoots it up the middle for a base hit. And like last night, starts out with a single as we set up the Blue Jays defensively. Blue Jays have 84 errors on the season. Here's how they'll line up. Travis Snyder with just his fourth start in right field. Vernon Wells is going to DH, so Alex Rio slides into center. Roland Scudero, Inglet, and Overbay. The infield we saw yesterday, Greg's on again behind the dish. Robinson Cano, another left hander, is the hitter now, playing second tonight for the Yankees. Gardner's a threat to go at first. He dives back to the bag. Halliday tonight. Comes into this ball game with a 19 and 11 record. His only 20 win season came back in 03, the same year he won the Cy Young Award when he went 22 and 7. Pitching to Cano here. Halliday's grown up with this organization. Now 31 years of age. Born and raised in the Denver area, makes his off-season home not far from the training complex in Dunedin. He gets a strike against Cano, one ball and one strike. And when all is said and done, he'll probably hold all the records. The pitching records that the Blue Jay have. The quickest Blue Jay pitcher to 100 wins. It only took him 200 starts to do that. You know about the Cy Young that you're just talking about. Second in career wins already. And against the Yankees, he's been incredibly successful in his career. 31 appearances against New York. He's picked up 14 victories, just five losses, and an ERA under three. And you're talking about a very good hitting team. The Yankees have been a great hitting team for a long time. 29 starts and two relief appearances versus the Yanks. ERA at 290. And it gets even better here at Rogers Center. He's only lost one time to him. Gardner goes, and the ball is fouled toward the Yankee dugout by Cano. So it's two and two now on Cano, who led all American League second baseman last season with 97 runs driven in. Maybe he is starting to come out of the hitting funk that he has been in what seems like the whole season. Hitting about 265, well below his career average. Here's the 2 2 on the ground. Scooter roll, England, over Bay, double play. A pitcher's best friend. You get that ball on the ground and let the infielders do the rest. 
Pena doesn't think that he was out. Watch the turn that by Joe England who's getting taken out by Brett Gardner. Cano thinks he beat it. Good job right there by Gardner to take out England, but he gets enough on the throw to just nip him at first base. So a 6 4 and 3 puts two away here in the top of the first inning and brings up Bobby Abreu. I think your comment late last night was it's amazing how a player can do virtually nothing through nine innings and then make an impact as Abreu did. He was 0 for 4 after nine innings last night with three strikeouts and then hit a grand slam in the 10th off of Jesse Carlson. Good players make their presence known. At it at any time. You, they might be quiet for eight innings. And then in big situations, they are able to rise up. And you can see from those numbers right there, Bobby Abreu has done that, looking for one more RBI. He hits a fly ball toward left center field. There's Adam Lind, and that's the top of the first. Take a look at the lineup for the Blue Jays tonight, and it didn't really change from a night ago. Joe England, as he did last evening, leads off. Marco Scudero bat second. Rios, Wells, and Lynn go three, four, and five. And then Overbay hits sixth and plays first. Scott Rollins at third. Travis Snyder moves up to the eighth spot again and plays right field this time. Breaks on as your catcher. And if you thought Carl Pavano had simply disappeared, he is back. He started a game against the Blue Jays in late August, and here he is finishing up the season in their rotation. He has been hurt for all but six starts this season, but he comes into this game with a 4 and 1 record, 499 earned run average. He has won his last two starts for the Yankees. Pavano pitched five innings against the Orioles last Friday, allowing two runs and six hits as the Yankees won that game 3 to 2. He faces Joe Inglet in the bottom of the first as Inglet fouls it away and Carl Pavano has really become the poster boy for free agents gone sour. He signed a four year contract for the Yankees for a shade under forty million dollars and this is just his twenty six start as a member of the New York team. Right, he missed eighty six ball games the first year. As Inglet is jammed on that ball Cano with a great arm for a second baseman gets him by a half a step. We have seen the arm of Robinson Cano on display so far in the, the games here in this series backhanded nice and smoothly his momentum taking him away from first base but still has plenty on for the first out. Here's how the Yankees will line up 80 years which is the fewest in the American League. Cabrera with his first start in left field that's Melky Cabrera and Francisco Cervelli. His first big league start behind the dish tonight. So two rookies in the lineup for the Yankees, one behind the plate and one in center field. As Marco Scudero steps up with one away in the first inning. Marco's making his 132nd start this year and is fourth on the team with 58 runs driven in. There's a tough hop for Benami. He throws him out five to three. Let's take a closer look at tonight's starter for the New York Yankees, Carl Pavano. I think he needs to use his fastball and go in and out with it, inside, outside, move it around the strike zone. He's also got a tight slider and a changeup. When he finds his rhythm and he gets into that rhythm, he can throw a lot of strikes. And I think he needs to make good use of his splitter. His last out, and he was very effective with that splitter against the Orioles. You look at Alex Rios who has 47 doubles this year. That's the fourth highest total in a single season in Blue Jay history. And he sends that ball in the air down the left field line. If you are wondering who is the leader for the Blue Jays in doubles Carlos Delgado in 2000 hit 57. Which is the all time single season record for doubles. John Olerud had 54 in that great year he had in 1993, and Vernon Weld had 49 
in his bust out year in 2003. And really everything but the power is a proper title here. You might not see him hit 30 home runs in a single season, but he'll do well in the extra base category. 47 doubles, the eight triples, the home runs are coming, but still off the mark that we have seen from Rios the last few years, tied to 49th in the AL with those home runs. Two strikes on Rios as he faces Carl Pomano with two gone in the first inning, just underway. And every time we have an ex ball player here in the TD Canada Trust Comfort Zone, they always say the same thing. Boy, the game looks different from down here, and you know what? They're right. Boy, we're close, and yeah. boy, it looks faster, doesn't it? That's why I got this puppy. <laughs> well, please protect me because we it. are awfully close. There's Rios hitting the ball to center field. Brett Gardner backs up. And Pavano picks up a 1 2 3 first inning scoreless in Toronto. We'll be back from the TD Canada Trust Comfort Zone after this. The Jays on Rogers Sportsnet. Brought to you by Home Hardware. Decorating to renovating, help is close to home. The Polaris Tough to Beat sales event going on now until May 31st. The GO train heads out of town, taking commuters to various parts, perhaps west, Burlington, Oakville, Hamilton. As Roy Halladay on the hill tonight facing the Yankees, making his 33rd start and searching for his 20th win of the year. In the second inning, he'll be facing Xavier Nady, Jason Giambi, and Wilson Betamit. Nady has become a very productive hitter since switching leads earlier this year, coming over from the Pittsburgh Pirates. Big two run single in last night's game. Now in 55 games since joining the Yankees, he's knocked in 36 and hit 11 home runs out, 24 on the season. Pretty good production. One and two, and that's just off the plate. Mike DeMuro is calling the balls and strikes this evening. As Halliday deals, and here it is, hit out toward right field. And then Travis Snyder is there to make the catch. I do believe this is his first start in right field. Snyder has played mostly left field. He has DH'd a few. Cito Gaston has said that he is going to be in the lineup the rest of the way out here. Actually, come to think of it, I think he started the game at Boston in right field, so this wouldn't be his first. Made a terrific catch, in fact, up against the wall. As Jason Giambi steps in. Now we're getting the evil eye from Lyle Overbay. <laughs> He's trying to figure out what the heck we're doing here. <laughs> you want a hot dog, Lyle? Is that what you want? <laughs> we can get it for you. It's free. Done and done. Here's Giambi, ground ball, and that sneaks through, a base hit. And Giambi turns for second. Up and throwing is Adam Lynn, and the throat is wide of the bag, so Giambi has extra bases. We saw a play just like that the other night from Travis Snyder, a ball down the line like that, a left-handed throwing left fielder. So that ball is kind of carved the other way. He gets to it, cuts it off. 360 Snyder got his man this time this throw kind of tails on Adam Lind. Giambi has extra bases you know you can do everything that the charts say you, you play Giambi to pull but if he takes that ball and goes the other way there's nothing you can do about it that's just good hitting. So he crosses up the defense with an extra base hit. And so the Yankees with a man on second and Wilson Betamy who is the third baseman steps in against Roy Halladay pitches inside a one ball and no strike count. 
Edemit went two for five last night with a single and double in his first two plate appearances. Now nine for his last 25 as he picks up Alex Rodriguez again here tonight at third base. That's two nights in a row that Joe Girardi has fielded the I guess we're out of the postseason lineup. And they are for the first time in many many seasons well, he, 13 consecutive playoff appearances for the Yankees and it comes to an end this year. And he has said that you know once they get eliminated which they did the other day when Boston won said I'm going to play my kids. We saw Miranda at first base yesterday. We're seeing Savelli Savelli behind the plate tonight. Cabrera is playing in left field. Ransom at shortstop. Much more because of the injury to Derek Jeter. Let's get some more from Sam Cosentino. Well, Jamie, uh, before the game, Joe Girardi said, hey, listen, we're going into Boston on the weekend, and there is a chance that those could be meaningful games based on what happens between Tampa Bay and Boston for home field advantage in that first round of the playoffs. All three of those aforementioned players will be in the lineup Friday night against Boston as they try and at least take something of a season in not making the postseason. Well, Tampa Bay has not yet clinched. They lost to Detroit this afternoon. As that ball is grounded to England. Bay to get to first, two gone second inning, and Giambi moves up to third. But you, you have to do the teams a favor, don't you? I mean, you don't throw out your B squad out there against a team that's, you know, trying to. Well, they're already in the playoffs. It wouldn't be fair to Tampa, you know. You throw that A squad out there and make them earn their way to either winning the division or becoming the wild card team. But I know Girardi wants to play some of his young players and see what they can do here the last week of the season. With two gun Cody Ransom the shortstop is in. Ransom has the distinction of making the final put out in the history of Yankee Stadium. And wisely handed the ball over to Mariano Rivera after the Yankees had defeated the Baltimore Orioles on Sunday. And within 24 hours, a handful of people had been arrested for trying to take pieces of the concrete <laughs> away. One strike on Ransom. Here's the offering from Halliday now 0 and 2. So Tampa Bay, who had Scott Casimir starting today lost at Comerica Park. They have yet to clinch the East. And the Red Sox can keep it a possibility they can pick up a victory this evening. The loser has to go play the Anaheim Angels or the Los Angeles Angels. So still a lot of baseball to be determined between those two teams. Two gone and 0-2 pitch, and that's down. With Giambi at third base. Here in the second inning. And the American League Central is still undecided. And the Twins have really made things interesting. There's Giambi. Ransom facing the man. Derek Jeter calls the best pitcher in baseball. One and two. Pitch on the way and he holds up. Two and two. And Tim McClellan, who's about 20 feet away from us. Says Ransom didn't go around. Well, you can be an umpire here. And you can see from that replay that he indeed held up. There are the great numbers for Halliday versus the Yankees this year. Looking to beat him for the fifth time in one season. 2 pitch and a weak ground ball for Scudero up and over to Overbay and Halliday gets out of it. Blue Jays bring their offense to the plate in the bottom of the second. We'll continue from Rogers Center next. Well, the General Motors home run challenge is officially closed for another year. And General Motors wants to say a big thank you to the tens of thousands of fans that entered this contest. GM has been presenting the home run challenge for four years and has given away a number of vehicles to lucky winners all over Canada. 
Earlier in July, Adam Hogarth from Sudbury, Ontario, won a new Chevrolet Malibu when Lyle Overbay nailed the GM display. The ball has popped up and headed well back of home plate as Vernon Wells swings at the first offering from Carl Pavano. Here's V Dub as he's known to many of his teammates, hitting 294 with 17 home runs and 69 RBIs. When Cito Gaston was asked before this game, about the improvements he thought were necessary next year offensively. An obvious answer was they need more home runs. As Wells grounds to third. Betemi moving to his left, drops the ball, and Vernon safe. So that goes as an error. On the third baseman, Benemy. Just his fourth error of the season and got to the ball in plenty of time. But it looked like he had trouble kind of transferring the ball from the glove to the hand, right into the glove. Goes to go get it, taps his glove, and then drops the ball. Fourth error of the season for Benemy. Good start here for the Blue Jays. You know, that's right. Uh, what you were just talking about about more power as Adam Lynn lines that ball foul. He was talking about that he, he wants to see more guys who are in the 20 to 25 home run territory and feels like there are some players here who have that ability. This being one of them right here Adam Lynn. Well Vernon missed about a third of the season so you have to think if he was healthy all year mm -hmm. long he'd have 25 at least. Lind is certainly capable of 20 home runs. Lyle Overbay was the other name he mentioned. You might remember in his first year with the Blue Jays in 06, Overbay hit 22. Mm -hmm. He mentioned Travis Snyder's name also. Now, who knows what's going to transpire between now and when the season starts next year. But he thinks eventually he'll be a 25 home run type hitter also. The easiest way to score a run. He says, you know, when you have trouble manufacturing run, something the Blue Jays had trouble with this year, especially early in the year. Fundamental hitting and manufacturing runs, the easiest way to remedy that is hit the ball out of the ballpark. Sam, do you have something to add here? Well, Jamie and, and Pat, part of that conversation too, which surprised me a little bit and was mentioned more than once by Cito Gaston, was the, the base running. He feels that the base running needs improvement. And Pat, it speaks to your manufacturing runs. The better you run the bases, the more often you get yourself into position to score runs. He said that was going to be a major part of spring training, along with getting a lot more hits and hitting going on in spring training. They are really going to concentrate on running the bases a little bit better. You know, for the longest time around here, that was not part of the overall philosophy. It was more of a station to station game and hit the long ball, but. Well, it certainly has worked for the Los Angeles Angels. Yes, I mean, it they, has. They run the bases probably better than anybody in the American League. Wave and a miss from Lind, and he strikes out. So Pavano picks up his first K. One gone. And Lyle Overbay will step in. In his last start against the Orioles, that looked like probably a split or a change. Against the Orioles, the O's missed on just six of the 33 swings versus Pavano. All of those office off speed pitches. There was a pretty good one right there at Adam Lynn for his first K. So here's the left handed hitting over Bay with one gone and Vernon Wells, thanks to an error from Wilson Benamit standing at first base. We're in the bottom of the second here at Rogers Center, no score as yet. Overbay's in a terrible slump right now, over his last 17.
Pavano on the hill for the Yankees, making just his seventh start this year. And that's high for a 2 1 count. He beat the Blue Jays at Yankee Stadium August the 29th. That victory, in fact, came 1,221 days after his last win at Yankee Stadium. He's been sidelined with all kinds of problems, mostly due to the right shoulder and right elbow. Yeah, that started it all after he signed with the Yankees, that shoulder problem, just 86 games in 05. Then he had a back injury and a wrist injury in 06 and missed the whole year. Just two games in 07 with a forearm injury, and you mentioned it. Just his seventh start this year. He has missed 128 games this year with elbow problems. He walks over, babe. That pushes Wells to second. Two base runners now with one gun. And Scott Rowland hit a home run. His 11th of the year last night. He's having a friendly conversation with Mike DeMuro. After the first game of this series, Roland was quite critical of the umpiring. Two on for the Blue Jays. One thanks to an error, the other thanks to a walk. And Scott Rowland looks at the first pitch from Pavano. It's high for ball one. Does he look freer to you at the plate? Back coming through a little bit quicker than it was earlier in the year when he had his hands raised almost about the height of his helmet. Now he has lowered him just a little bit. It looked like they're right off the shoulder now. He gets pulled by that pitch one and one. The bat looks a little freer coming through the zone. It looks a little bit quicker. And he's made a conscious decision to drop the hands and loosen up the shoulders a little bit while he's at the plate. He figured he had to to be able to extend his career. He's got two years left on a contract with the Blue Jays. As he fouls that one off well over our heads and out of play. He was getting beat a lot with a fastball. Especially on the inner half and found a lot of balls back and off to the right just wasn't getting the bat head out in front. Willie Upshaw when he was a hitting coach used to talk about you know lowering your hands and taking the pressure off your shoulder so you could use your use your hands a little bit more freer. Numbers kind of bear it out that he's swinging a lot better. This ball heads for center field. Under it is Gardner. And so Roland is the second out. And who knows what 2009 holds for Travis Snyder. He could be at the major league level all season long. He could be at triple A all year long. Well, there was some talk of maybe sending him to play some winter ball or maybe sending him to the Arizona Fall League, but it was talked to us and told to us yesterday that he's going to go home and just kind of just shut it down. He has had a full season of baseball, and it started last year about this time when he played in the Arizona Fall League. Went home for a little bit and then came to spring training, and you know what kind of year it's been for Travis this year, coming through four stops through the minor league system. I think it'd be a good idea just for him to go home and just rest up, let the body rest, then get back in and get ready for next year. He drills the ball to left field, a base hit. Wells is held at third. And Snyder continues to hit for average. He loads the bases for Gregson. One thing that I like about Travis Snyder is he is not intimidated. He looks like he belongs and all good hitters when they step into that batter's box they look like they belong. Travis Snyder is that type of hitter. That is a good piece of hitting right there letting that ball get a little deep and then squaring it up and hitting it hard. 
Well, it hasn't been the most memorable year for Greg Zahn, but he's been in this position before. Bases loaded. In a game earlier this month, in the 13th inning, he had a grand slam to right field. Off Dan Wheeler of the Tampa Bay Rays, a walk-off victory right in the heart of that 10-game win streak the Blue Jays were able to piece together. So here he is with two gone and the bases loaded. Bovano on the hill, one strike. And it's sent foul, so Zahn is behind 0-2. Zahn's a switch hitter and one of four in Blue Jay history to hit home runs from both sides of the plate in the same game. The other three men, Devon White, Jose Cruz Jr., and Roberto Alomar. He almost walked right into that one. That pitch had a purpose because he felt like Greg Saul was kind of diving into everything. Watch his front foot and his front shoulder. Everything is in, and he's going to try and move him off the plate. As a hitter now, when a guy does that, what are you thinking about? You're thinking about something soft away right here. Something off speed. And he comes in under the elbows. Two balls and two strikes. Here's a veteran who never seems deterred by two strikes. He's just got great strike zone awareness, doesn't he? They have been getting him out, striking him out with back tour breaking stuff this whole series. That's in two. And now Pavano is one ball away from walking in a run. He got the bases loaded here. Snyder's at first. Over Bay at second, Vernon Wells at third, two gone second inning, and Greg's on the hitter. A savvy veteran at the plate. A snarly look from Pavano. The runners go. It's on the ground, right at Giambi. And he takes care of Zahn, putting away the Blue Jays and leaving the bases loaded. Two complete, no score as you're watching Blue Jays baseball on Rogers Sportsnet. Well, tonight's contestant in the VTech Million Dollar Baseball Giveaway is John Suter of Oshawa, Ontario. John entered at VTechBaseballGiveaway.com. And if one of the Blue Jays is to hit for the cycle, John could be a winner of $1 million. Jamie Campbell and Pat Tabler joined by Sam Cosentino. As we sit in the TD Canada Trust comfort zone tonight and watch Melky Cabrera pop it up and too far for Zahn to get to. Roy Halliday with 19 victories. Trying to pick up his second 20 win season. He's playing it cool, isn't he? <laughs> His heart must be racing. Yeah, yeah. Every time you, you see line drives back like that at Halliday, you got to remember back in Texas when he got hit on the foot, but that time he throws the glove up. Those are the kind of balls that catch you. You don't catch the ball, the ball catches you. Or even, even more recently, that game in Pittsburgh where. Niger Morgan lined one off his temple or so it seemed. First pitch swinging. Here's the throw over the first to Overbay. And Francisco Cervelli in his first big league start is out. Yeah, I, I remember that one. Uh, I wasn't there. You guys were doing the game, but I was watching it. And I thought, oh, my goodness. He's going to miss some time on the disabled list when Halliday got that ball off of his forehead. Yeah, his temple. His temple like, well, close to his temple. Uh-huh. That was something else. So with two gone. Here's the leadoff man again, Brett Gardner. He has one of two hits against Halliday tonight. A single to center field to lead off the game.
You know, as brilliant and dominant as Dave Steve was throughout his entire career with the Blue Jays, he never won 20 games. The first Blue Jay 20 game winner was Jack Morris with your 1992 club. Hard to believe, isn't it, uh, about Dave Steve because he was so good for so long. Cito was saying before the game yesterday that if he had the bullpen that the Blue Jays had this year, he would have won 20 games a few times. But there are the 20 win winners in Blue Jay history. Some great pitchers on that list. Two strikes on Gardner. And now two and two. Second hit. The ball is retrieved by Snyder. Gardner's in the second, so he's singled and doubled. Had a tri triple here the other night. And it looked like this was going to be extra bases. Nice short swing on that little cutter on the inner half. Now Travis Snyder's got to field this ball cleanly or. That's going to be a triple. Gets it off the wall. Fair ball. See, I was playing umpire right there. <laughs> Fair ball. That's our first Pat Tabler replay of the year. Thank goodness. <laughs> that ball's hit hard, and it gets past a diving over bay. So Gardner turns for home. The throw is late, and in the process, Cano moves up to second. Hey, here was the problem on that play. We've talked about the speed, and speed of Brett Gardner, but some heads up base running by Robinson Cano. He hits the ball hard, and Lyle Overbay is going to dive for the ball. Now he's the setup, the cutoff man, but because he dove for the ball, he's nowhere in sight to be the cutoff man, and that allows Cano to move into scoring position. There was really no way they were going to get Brett Gardner. He runs too well and too fast. But because Overbay had to go after the ball and dive for the ball, there's no cutoff man there. So when Sarah Snyder throws home, the ball goes all the way in the zone, and Cano recognizes that and just changes places with Brett Gardner. And Bobby Abreu, with two gone, has a chance at his 100th RBI of the year. He came into last night's game with 95, but hit a 10th inning grand slam and stands at 99. The Yankees with the first run of the game top of three it's one nothing New York and Cano, who drove it home stands at second. Abreu is one of a handful of high priced free agents that will go on the market soon after the World Series. Here's the 2 0 pitch. And on the ground for Scudero. But the Yankees get one on the base hit by Cano and take the early lead on Roy Halliday and the Blue Jays. Perhaps seeing baseball for the first time. There might be a few here at Rogers Center in the final home game of the year. There's a little one at the window who is enjoying what she or he is watching. I guess that's a little girl. Jamie Campbell and Pat Tabler having a great time from the TD Canada Trust Comfort Zone. As Joe Inglet flies the ball into right field. Nady comes in and there's one gun. If we're up here, where is Scott Carson, our esteemed statistician and sportsnet.ca columnist? He hasn't moved. Oh, he's picking up is what he's doing. What's going on up there? Come on, Scotty. <laughs> Drinking coffee. So we move out. He moves in. And he brings company. Mikey's with them. Mike Hayes. Unbelievable. 
Marco Scudero is the hitter now. Yankees with a one nothing lead. They have won seven straight ball games. And as Pavano deals, and a short hop, Ransom fields the ball and throws out Scudero. That's a fine play. Yeah, one thing that the Yankees have really done this year is they have played great defense. Just 80 errors, which is the fewest in the American League, and this is Derek Jeter-esque right here. Gets up and make a strong throw to get Marco Scudero as Ransom takes away a base hit. Nice play. You know, one thing about being down here, you get to kind of interact with the fans, and they're, they're starting to figure out what's going on down here. We're, we're on a first name basis already with most of the people here. Good. Us. Good. I, they get to watch the TV with us. There's a base hit for Alex Rios. seems to get a hit against the Yankees doesn't he look at this I mean we got uh, there's Jeff and Josh here and this was Keith and that's John I mean by the end of the night we're going to know the first 20 people here what are you guys drinking there yeah <laughs> send us some come on They want to pipe in on the broadcast to uh, refrain from obscenities. Cervelli tries to frame that pitch from Pavano. 1 and 0 now to Vernon Wells, who's 0 for 1 in the ball game. This has been his second straight injury shortened season. And he's healthy and plays the full complement of games. He's normally good for a 300 average, mm -hmm. 30 home runs, and 100 RBIs. And that is something the Blue Jays hope to look forward to next season. They can ill afford to have him miss the amount of games he missed this year. You know what I was amazed about about Vernon this year is how quickly he came back from those injuries. Rios is on the run. Cervelli throws down the second, but not in time to get Alex. 32 stolen bases now for Rios as he moves into scoring position. Cervelli's pretty quick behind the plate. He's got quick feet, he's got quick hands, and he's got a pretty good arm. He did a pretty good job. This was stolen against Carl Pavano. You see the high leg kick from Pavano? A good throw from the youngster Cervelli. Kind of looks like uh, wow. Pudge, doesn't it, a little bit? That's intense. Ivan Rodriguez, his, uh, his teammate. But again, that that stolen base was against Carl, Carl Pavano in the high leg kick. Speeds their bat up. And when you watch Vernon Wells on this replay, watch him kind of double clutch and wait for that ball and then just speeds his bat up right through the zone. A nice level swing. Home run number 18. And you know the fans here are loving it. Who's that? <laughs> That's Keith. That's our pal Keith. Carl Pavano has not thrown a, a lot of innings this year. We've talked about the injuries, but that's his fifth home run he's given up already in 32 innings. Looked like a changeup that was up. 
And Wells got on top of it for the home run. Call the last month of the season for Pavano an audition because his contract comes to an mm -hmm. end. He's got a buyout clause with the Yankees who will probably exercise it. And you might find Pavano pitching somewhere next year if there's a team out there who likes what they have seen in the last eight starts. He has spent some time in the Montreal Expo organization. Had that great year with Florida. Florida Marlins. Four, he won 18 games. And his pitching coach was Brad Arnsberg. Brad Arnsberg. Good point. Teammate of A.J. Burnett on that Florida Marlins team. Two balls and two strikes now to Adam Lynn. There's a roller that goes off for Bono. And Benemy decides to eat the baseball. An infield single for Lynn. And Blue Jays keep it going here in the third inning. Yeah, Pavano doesn't get that shoe in the way. That ball goes out into center field for a hit. But he kind of kicks it over to the third baseman. The ball kind of dies. No chance for Benemy to pick the ball up and get Lind. And he's aboard with his first hit. Hey, we've got a winner in the VTEC Million Dollar Baseball Giveaway. Brad Keep of Hanover, Ontario has won VTEC's LS5145 5.8 gigahertz digital phone system with Bluetooth technology and answering machine. Congratulations, you're a winner in the VTEC Million Dollar Baseball Giveaway. Ooh, that was a good home run cut right there by Lyle Overbay. Something that they're trying to get him to do, to be a little bit more aggressive, get the bat head out, and if he throws inside, try and pull it and pull it into the stands. I think Lyle wants that last pitch back. One on and two gone. One ball and one strike to Overbay. Pitch there from Pavano, and it's a one ball, two strike count. The 32 year old Pavano looks in at Cervelli. Catcher sets up outside, and it's down for ball two. One thing that Lyle Overbay has done frequently this year is earn the free pass. He's walked 73 times. And that ball is hit high in the air into left field. Here's Cabrera. And it stays around for him to make the grab in foul ground. Overbay's retired with Vernon Wells and his 18th home run of the year gives Toronto a two to one lead. Welcome back to the Rogers Center. Top of the fourth inning after Vernon Wells' 18th home run of the year. The Jays lead it 2-1. Earlier today, the Jays Care Foundation launched a new initiative. I'm with John McIntyre, who sits on the board of the Jays Care Foundation. The Youth Challenge Fund, supported in part by the Blue Jays. John, tell me a little bit about the Youth Challenge Fund. Well, the Youth Challenge Fund and what we've launched today is a Team Up for Youth, which is a collaboration between the four major pro sports teams in Toronto, the Leafs, the Argos, the Raptors, and, of course, our own Blue Jays. And we've committed over $700,000 uh, to be used to uh, work with youth projects in high needs communities in the 13 priority communities right across the city. So fabulous initiative, great collaboration between all of the four clubs. One pitch, one out for Halliday here in the top of the fourth uh, with John McIntyre of the Jays Care Foundation. And John, you talk about priority neighborhoods. What exactly uh, is that mean and how is that established? Well, the United Way's done a lot of research uh, over the years, and they've come up with a uh, formula. It really talks about the social needs in those communities. They're characterized by often a lot of single-parent families, a lot of uh, uh, heavily, 
a lot, lots of immigrant families, uh, perhaps uh, English isn't their first language. They have a lot of social problems and a lot of challenges. And we need special attention and special focus uh, to be able to work in those communities and make sure that the youth have every advantage to, uh, to get ahead and realize their own dreams. Well, John, uh, thanks for your time. Congratulations on this new initiative. Thanks, Sam. That's John McIntyre of the Jays Care Foundation as the Blue Jays partner up with the Leafs, the Raptors, and the Argos in part for the Youth Challenge Fund. Jamie, Pat? Sam, thank you so much. And I promise you, if I snag a ball in today's game, I'm going to auction it off on the air and we'll send the proceeds yes. to the Jays Care Foundation. Aren't you getting a baseball from uh, Travis Snyder? You're giving away my secrets. Secrets? Well, you're not supposed to tell anybody I prearranged this. Why not? <laughs> Why, why'd you tell me that? Well, he said he might. First, he's got to catch a, a, a final out in right field. <laughs> there you go, Tabs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I spoke with Travis before the game. Isn't he going to roll you a baseball here? Well, he hasn't promised me anything because they have some kind of a pattern where if he catches the final out, he's got to toss it to Rios in I center see. field and then Rios runs it in. If that happens, you might get another letter from the Blue Jays. <laughs> oh, don't go there. <laughs> you guys got me and got me good yesterday. <laughs> Tell the <a> story. <laughs> Here's Jason Giambi at the dish. And we're not going to elaborate. Three and two is the count. One gone in the fourth inning. The Blue Jays ahead two to one. Swing and a miss. And ring him up. Halliday has his first strikeout of the game. He threw everything hard, 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 and watch him pull the string here. Just messes up. Jason Giambi had him way out in front. Halliday picks up the strikeout number one. And number 202 this year. You know, for a pitcher who takes great pride in getting outs by contact, 202 is a lot of strikeouts. That was something that was missing from Halliday's resume the last few years. And everybody's saying, well, he's lost it. He's, he's not much of a strikeout pitcher. Can't say that about the 2008 version of Halliday. He's just been pounding that strike zone. Third in the American League. He's got two strikes on better meet. Here it comes inside of beauty. John touches the foul tip and now it's 203 for Halliday and a clean fourth. Off to the bottom half with the Blue Jays on top two to one. You're watching Blue Jays baseball on Rogers Sportsnet. You know, if you go to BlueJays.com, you will find the schedule for the 2009 season and information for ticket packages that are now available. Be first to get the best seats in the house. Check out the website, or you can call the ticket office. Here's a blast to center field, sending Gardner back to the wall, and he pulls it down for the first out. A long flyout off the bat of Scott Rowland. Back at Rogers Center, Jamie Campbell and Pat Tabler are with you from the TD Canada Trust Comfort Zone. In the final home game of the year. Been an interesting ride for the Blue Jays. Who right now sit eight games above 500. And here's a man who is part of their future. 20 year old Travis Snyder. How about that average of 323. Just keep it going. So when he gets a baseball card, that first line over 300. That means something, doesn't it? It, it certainly does. You know, they talk about, you know, 299 is so much different than 300. It just looks nice on that line, that first one. A lot better than the, I believe it was 186. <laughs> I had on my first baseball card. Your first year in the big leagues? My first month. That's right. 
186. But that was how many games? That was with the Chicago Cubs? Yeah, it was about 100 at bats. Right. 100 and something at bats, 18 or 19 hits. Uh, not a whole lot of production. Not like Travis Snyder is. Two home runs and 11 driven in. There's a high chopper towards second, charged by Cano. And misses Giambi completely. Snyder was hightailing it down the line. Now, it looked like maybe that ball took a little crazy hop on him at the end there. Looked like he was going to kind of glove it with two hands, but then had to kind of reach out and then just did not have a grip. And he is rewarded. Watch this ball as it comes up to him. And it kind of takes a crazy hop. And I think that kind of threw off the timing. And Travis Snyder, talking about 300, <laughs> gets a base hit. Now Greg Zahn's trying to take our head off. That didn't miss us by much. So Snyder now with the base hit is two for two, so his average bumps up to 333. As we broadcast tonight from the TD Canada Trust Comfort Zone, switch hitter Greg Zahn at the plate, one strike on him. One out in the inning, Snyder at first, and a wave and a miss from Zahn. He falls behind, nothing in two. Zahn's first big league home run came way back in 1995 against the Blue Jays' Woody Williams. Greg was playing for the Baltimore Orioles then. So, you know, another thing that we can uh, do when we are sitting down here and we're so close to the ball players. Is in between innings, Lyle Overbay was telling us that that is not a splitter, that is more of a changeup that he's throwing the left hander. So thank you, Lyle. And scouting reports that we have, it shows that he threw a slide, or excuse me, a splitter. We'll try and look into his glove at some point to see the grip that he has. So we know the players are listening. Well, now we'll try and find out who relayed that information to Overbay. I'm going to guess it was the designated hitter tonight, Vernon Wells. Because remember, Frank Thomas, when he was the DH here, he would make his way mm -hmm. back into the clubhouse between at bats. Well, Vernon would have been uh, on the bench of the first inning, wouldn't he? Here we go. What's he trying to do? I mean, we worked together in the postseason. What's going on there, Greg? That's called an ugly finder. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Pick that one clean. Yeah. You're the big leaguer. You should be sitting in this front seat. Yeah, well, I'm smarter. <laughs> Here comes the one two. Pavano deals and it's on the ground sneaking under the glove of Pano. He stayed down on that one didn't he. Looked like another off speed pitch from Pavano. And instead of lifting up he stayed right down over that ball and drove it right back through the middle. Look, that one looked like that one went right under the glove of Robbie Cano. Sixth hit of the night for the Blue Jay. So with one out, Joe Inglet now, who's 0 for 2. He steps in with two on for the Blue Jays and one gone. Bottom of four, and the Jays have a 2 to 1 lead on the strength of a home run by Vernon Wells one inning ago. Hinglet has grounded to second and flat out to right field. Pavano from the stretch on the 0-1. And the pitch is waved at and missed.
As advised by Lyle Overbay, Pavano's throwing a changeup and a good one. Yeah, the ball's really dipping. Throws it with great arm action. <laughs> Yankees have won seven straight games, and they've done it on the strength of tremendous pitching. Heading into this game, giving up just 11 runs in those seven games. There's a base hit for England. Snyder heads for home. The throw in cut off. And there is Travis scoring to give the Blue Jays a three to one lead. Not so tonight. Just three runs given up in the first two games against the Blue Jays. They've got three already here in the fourth inning. Joe Inglick goes and gets this one, stays back just enough and uses his hands and rips it by Giambi. The first baseman, a step and a dive and no chance for Giambi. Here comes the throw and that ball's not gonna be in time to get Snyder. Inglick with the RBI, Snyder with the run scored and the Blue Jays are now ahead three to one. I was had by Giambi on that play. What do you mean? I thought he cut that ball off. He's standing right in front of us. <laughs> That's the beauty of watching from down here. Game seems a lot faster, doesn't it? The Boy, closer it ever. The closer you get to the dirt, the faster the game is. 72 Set. pitches for Carl Pavano. Uh, we got San Cosentino here now, guys. So three runs on the board now for the Jays. Two on, one out, and Marco Scudero watches the ball sail wide. Consecutive singles from Snyder, Zahn, and now Inglet has increased the lead for the Jays. Here's a slapper. Ransom gets the force at second, nothing more. See Cody Grasm kind of shaking his head. I think he felt that he could have turned a double play there, but not a very good throw to the second baseman Robbie Cano and Inglet going in hard at second base. Keeps the inning alive for real. <laughs> Brings up Alex Rios, the number three hitter. Men on the corners for the Jays. Ball one from Pavano. Sam Cosentino has now joined us. I knew there was an extra seat here for a reason, Sam. Well, I saw the popcorn and ice cream you guys were chowing down on. I figured hey, I'd better come down here and get a part of that. These guys over here want you to sit beside them. I don't know if you've noticed that. You've got some big fans over here to my left. Well, then that way you couldn't protect me, so I, I think I, I'm going to stay right I think where because I'm because they're at. buying See, the beers. That's a big league move right there. <laughs> a veteran get, move. Veteran move. You get back down this way. I got Jamie, and then I got the old first baseman beside <laughs> me. I got a pretty good chance if something gets hit down this way. You're totally safe there, big man. <laughs> <laughs> Two lines of defense. I feel a lot better than just the one. Three-0 -oh count here. Time for the green light, right? And why not? If you feel comfortable, just let it rip right here. And it's high for ball four. So Pavano's really struggling right now. And he sees a bases loaded situation for the second time in this ball game. Joe Girardi looks on stoically. Seated alongside Rob Thompson, the Canadian born bench coach for the Yankees. Well, Vernon Wells has homered once in this game. He's got three men on. And he goes after the first pitch, lining it to left field. The ball drops quickly and gets away from Cabrera. 
Two runs are in, and Wells has done it again, driving in a pair. He is not going to waste any time. First pitch he sees, this ball is ripped in the left field. Hooks it down the left field line. RBI is number 72 and 73 across the plate. And we are loving it. Loving it. Say, let's go. <laughs> like Keep a third base moving. coach. Yeah. Time. <laughs> I get into it still. <laughs> you know? Well, as you know, this is never an easy game to pitch and to play in. It's the last home game of the season. And if you were in the clubhouse before the game, guys were packing up, getting A, ready to go for the road, and B, ready to, some guys leave right from Baltimore. Well, Joe Girardi has seen enough. He'll go to the bullpen with Toronto leading 5-1. to one. This place will likely be packed in March when Canada faces off against the United States in the first round of the 09 World Baseball Classic. Information is available to you at MLB.com. I believe you can register for tickets. They haven't yet gone on sale, but believe me, it's going to be quite an environment here when the Canadians take on the Americans. You know, Jamie, I heard... His grandfather is Canadian and by virtue may have a chance to play for the Canadian team in that event, which would be pretty uh, interesting and pretty good considering that's been an area of weakness for the Blue Jays, the, the middle infield. Very impressive. He's originally from New Zealand, I believe. He is. Scott Campbell has had a terrific season. And the Blue Jays minor, minor league system this year as Adam Lynn faces Dan Geis here in the fourth inning. Three runs in. And the Blue Jays lead it five to one. And that score puts smiles on a lot of people's faces in this building because the runs are in support of Roy Halladay, who's searching for his 20th win this year. Here's a man who at one point earlier this year pitched four consecutive complete games and lost three of them. So he would be a deserving 20 game winner. Geis in relief of Pavano who goes three and two thirds. The Yankees long man. Gets a foul ball off the bat of Lind. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with Lynn next year as far as maybe getting some uh, at bats over at first base and some reps over there. And and well the center field. That spins Gardner around but he keeps his eye on the ball and makes the catch to retire the side not before the Blue Jays score three and take a five to one lead. Everybody, welcome to the Sportsnet Connected Studios. I'm Sean McCormick. Hope you're enjoying the uh, baseball game. Now, the Diamondbacks, they've been absolutely terrible in the month of September, going 13-28. and 28, And if they lost tonight, they would be officially eliminated from playoff contention. They were taken on the Cardinals in St. Louis. Pick this one up in the bottom of the seventh inning. 6-3 St. Louis Pujols with his 35th of the season. Going yard, a three-run jack. You can write the D-backs off as the Cards officially eliminate them. Taking it 12-3, and with that, the Dodgers clinch the NL West. Coming up on Connected, following the baseball game, uh, more on Cito Gaston's contract extension, and eight preseason games in the NHL to tell you about. All that and more on Connected, following the game. Hope to see you there. It goes as a short outing for Carl Pavano in his seventh start of the year. Three and two-thirds, he gives up five runs. And then leaves it up to the bullpen to try and rescue him. Started nicely for him. A one, two, three, first inning. Then he wriggled out of some problems in the second. Blue Jays were able to reach him with the home run by Wells in the third, and then the, the single by Vernon to, to chase him.
Tonight he made his 26th and perhaps final start as a member of the Yankees. And watches now from the bench as Roy Halladay goes after win number 20. This is where we have seen Halliday in the past where he starts to smell blood, right? He can see that finish line and he just goes right after the hitters here. You know, he is so well respected in that locker room. There's no question that the players on this team have had this on their mind for some time and wanted to get a, an offensive outburst against the Yankees to ensure that Halliday could get his 20th win. You know, you start looking for like little victories at the end of the season when you're out of the pennant race you start playing for those type of things 20 victories for a, a, a pitcher 100 RBIs if you're a batter you try and hit 300 you know those kind of things it's, it's kind of like the carrot that's in front of you to keep you motivated as you finish up the season there's Melky Cabrera the left fielder Who really got a dose of reality earlier this year when he was demoted to Triple A, and the reports out of New York have it that he was carrying himself as if he was essentially guaranteed a spot in the starting lineup every day. He was set down in the middle of August for about two weeks, kind of a wake-up call, a little bit. He got a hit. At least one hit in 12 of the 15 games that he had down in the minor league. There's a hard ground ball down the right field side. It gets passed over Bay. And Cabrera comes up with a sharp base hit. Ransom is now at third. Two on, nobody out, fifth inning. And this is where Halliday could really use a double play ball. How about a strikeout first and then a double play? Sure. <laughs> like a hard cutter just out of the reach of Lyle over there. That ball a foot or two to his left. That's a double play, but it's in the right field. Yankees play first and third. Nobody out here. Francisco Cervelli is the catcher starting his first big league game. Called up to the bigs about a week ago. And there's the chopper to Scudero. He underhands to England over to first. And a double play. Right on cue. Okay. Ransom in the process comes in to score. Next best thing. Get that double play. No RBI for young Cervelli. But the Yankees get one of them back. Now five to two. Well, Brett Gardner's had a nice night against the dock. Two for two with a single and a double. He scored the Yankees' first run in the third inning. mentioned the name of Scott Campbell who was a very good looking second baseman in the Blue Jay system their current second baseman has been in attendance here Aaron Hill and I spoke with him before the game and he is healthy feeling good the head is clear and he feels he'll be ready to go when spring training opens well you know what the best thing for him was for the team to tell him to go home and to get away because when you're around the ballpark for so many hours during the course of the day you tend to get a little bored and so what do you do you work out you get on the bike you start running you want to take ground balls and he couldn't recover from that he'd feel dizzy the next day so the best thing for Aaron Hill was to go home get rested he did absolutely nothing for three weeks but but eat well and in the course of doing so lose some of that weight that he had put on. England dives to his left, comes up with a baseball, but they don't get it in time to get Gardner. Third hit of the night for Brett Gardner. You can see he's going to have a lot of infield singles like that before he is done. Outstanding play by Joe England. 
And he comes up quickly. Good stretch by Lyle Overbay. Watch this. As you can tell from that replay, good call by the first base umpire, Tim McClellan, as Gardner beats it. Boy, you can't do much more than what England right. did there. And Overbay on the other end. Just outrunning the baseball. Gardner's now three for three and takes off on the first pitch. Cano hits the ball hard to Scudero and nifty back there, and he gets the runner and gets Halliday out of the inning. The Yankees pick up one, but that's it against Doc. It's a 5 2 Toronto lead as we head for the last of the fifth inning. Aaron Hill was knocked out of the lineup in May in Oakland. You can bet he's looking forward to 2009. Looking for the next season, looking forward to just uh, breaking the sweat, really getting out there and, and working out and just preparing myself because it's it's disappointing. I mean, it really is. I feel like you let everybody down. I mean, I know it's no, no one's fault when you get hurt because you're you know playing hard and everything, but it happens. But you just you hate it because you're, you're useless. You don't have anything to do, so. Just can't wait to come back healthy and, and see the guys and see what happens this offseason with some of the guys. And I'm sure there'll be some new faces and go from there. That is a bad feeling when you're on the disabled list. You don't even feel like you're part of the team. But what Sam was saying is so true. Finally followed the doctor's orders and went home and just relaxed. I mean, you're antsy, you're excited, you want to be part of the team, you want to stay in shape. But the best medicine is just go home and just do nothing well that's all you've done you know if you play in high school and you play in college probably since 14 or 15 years old that's all you've ever done is devoted your summers to baseball mm -hmm. and the injury to hill occurred on such a freakish play in oakland when he was backing up on a pop fly beyond second base and collided with david Eckstein. who would have thought at that time that it would knock him out for the entire year it, it didn't look like it was much did it a little soft collision, but it was just hit directly on the temple area that caused Aaron to miss the rest of the season. And you have to be so careful with those injuries these days. You look at Corey Koski, you look at Mike Matheny, essentially concussions ending both of their careers. Ryan Church. Ryan Church had a lot Met. of trouble earlier this year. He, he's still not the same, you know? You know, the Mets have caught a little heat for, in some people's opinions, rushing him back to the major league level. As we look at Scott Rowland facing Dan Geis. We'll have to get uh, Lyle Overbay when he comes back out defensively to give us a scouting report on Geis. Because he already gave us an idea as to what uh, Carl Bovano was throwing. Geis made his Yankee debut in early June against the Blue Jays in long relief. Got some big league time, I believe, last year with the San Francisco Giants. Ended up taking a, the loss in that game against the Blue Jays in early June. But pitched well. Two and two on Scott Rowland. And Rowland picks up a base hit to left field. I agree with you, Pat. Uh, earlier in the game, you talked about how free and easy Scott Rowland yeah. looks. And I think the indication he starts driving balls to left center and the center field, and even this one along the ground, the ball's hit so hard. Yeah, look where the head of the bat is, though. It's out in front. He's not getting beat up by that fastball. Right under the glove of Betamy. Tagged the ball his last step back to center field pretty well. It's funny how the defense changes with the advanced scouting. You know, when he couldn't get around on a fastball before, they shaded him to right field. And now that he's starting to get around on it again, they've had to straighten up the defense. Pull it up. Play on the pull side a little more. Well, Travis Snyder is at the plate now. As Roland stands at first with Jason Giambi. One strike on Snyder, who has a pair of base hits. He's raised his average to 333. And he rips the ball to right field. And Nate, Nate chases it down at the wall. Picked up by the center fielder Gardner. Rolling rounds third and heads for home. And Snyder has knocked in a run.
You know, the, the ball just sounds different when Travis Snyder hits the ball solidly. Six double a season, 12th RBI. It just sounds solid, and he's so strong for such a young player. It's always a good indication when a guy hits a line drive or a couple hopper to the gap and it gets to the wall. All the way to the wall. He's got some, some pop and some carry. And it comes from right here, right into his hands. You shake his hands, he's got big meat hooks, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. You don't often hear that about a lot of players, that the ball sounds different coming off their bat. I recall a few years back Eric Bedard telling me when Nick Markakis was coming up with the mm -hmm. Orioles that it just sounded different when it came off his bat. That's quite a compliment. Do you know who had the loudest boom that I ever heard oh. when it came up? Bo Jackson. Oh, oh man. not surprised at all. That 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 sound like, sounded like a cannon going off when he connected. And that is all strength and bat speed. Here's the one one to Zahn, a breaking ball in for strike two. You didn't want to have to play infield in with Bo Jackson. No, no. <laughs> or block the plate yeah. when he was coming. <laughs> it's a shame we didn't get a chance to see Bo Jackson play longer than he did. Both sports. Both sports. Best I've ever seen. Best athlete I've ever seen. By far. His arm was really was underrated. No one talked about his arm because of his speed and his power, but his arm might have been one of the best that I've ever seen. So make a play in Seattle one night to save a ball game. Throwing out Harold Reynolds at the plate from the wall at the Kingo down the left field line on a fly. Really? From the corner. And didn't you tell me that Jackson had invited you and several other Royals to the game in which yeah. he was injured yep. and suffered that hip, hip injury that basically derailed his professional we, we were on the sidelines. George Brett and I, Mark Gugelza, Brett Saberhagen, we were on the sidelines when basically his football career ended. Three and two to Greg Zahn. Here comes the pitch from Geis. And it's stroke foul into the right field seats. A 6-2 Toronto lead. And in the final home game of the year, the wave starts to circle the Rogers Center. And speaking Here's of the wave, the wave. <laughs> watch this wave. That's pretty weak. You know, there are so <laughs> many guys. That looks who like work. me in Boston. <laughs> So many good people that work on this broadcast every single night. We didn't really get a chance to mention them all by name and won't. So we took a picture of everybody. And believe me, and I know you feel the same way, Pat and Sam. From my end of things, you guys are the best in the business, and it's such a pleasure to work with you every day. It truly is, is a team when you talk about the video, the replays, all the graphics and the fonts that go up there, and you talk about the sound in, in order to make us sound good all the time. Technicians, it's, cameramen, oh. everybody, hey. floor generals. <laughs> <laughs> we better get in on the wave here. Oh, come on, stand up, Tabs. Come on. It to right field. Nady back toward the wall. He looks and it hits the base of the wall as Snyder rounds third. Zahn to the second, an RBI double. And aren't the eight and nine hitters having a nice night? Twelfth double of the season for Greg Zahn. Run number seven crosses the plate. Fastball right down Broadway, and he digs it out, goes down and gets it. No chance for Nady. By the time he tracks it down, another run scores, and that's going to be it for Dan Geis. Jays on Rogers Sportsnet. Brought to you by Home Hardware. Decorating to renovating, help is close to home. The Polaris Tough to Beat sales event going on now until May 31st.
right up the CN Tower with us. A building constructed about two years before the Blue Jays came to Toronto. What a view from up there, too. What a view from down below the TD Canada Trust Comfort Zone. That's where we're watching the game tonight. As David Robertson, a right-hander, comes out of the bullpen to make his 23rd appearance of the year. He's a rookie who made his Major League debut with the Yankees against the Mets at Shea Stadium during interleague play in June. Yeah, selected in the 17th round just a couple of years ago in 2006. He made three jumps last year for the Blue Jays from low A to high A to double A. And now he's here in the big leagues. And he sports a 3 0 record. And he faces Joe England, who would love to keep that 300 average right through to the end of the weekend. The Blue Jays, after this one, move on to Baltimore for three games to finish up the year. Tomorrow night, Scott Richmond faces left hander Chris Waters. Richmond scheduled to make his fifth start of the year and first outside of Canada in the big leagues. He hasn't pitched in any other park but this one to this point. It was a ground ball for Cano. And England is retired as Zahn advances to third. We'd like to wish a happy 89th birthday tonight to Grace Jackson in Harrietsville, Ontario. And as well, a happy 88th to Oni Moore in Brandon, Manitoba. They're enjoying the outcome of this one so far. 7 2 is the lead for the Blue Jays. Marco Scudero is without a base hit, but he scored a run after reaching on a fielder's choice in the fourth inning. With two out, here's the 1 0 pitch from Robertson, swung on and missed by Scudero. So we're in our final presentation of On the Road, brought to you by Hampton Hotels. At Hampton, we love having you here. Richmond, Parrish, and Litch will finish up starting against the Orioles in a three-game set at Camden Yards. Blue Jays, oh, Chris Waters, something. Waters uh, pitched extremely well against them here. Maybe that was last week. Shutout, complete game, so. Time for a little payback. That'll be tomorrow night in Baltimore. Robertson replaces Geis, who went two thirds. Two balls and a strike on Scudero. Red Sox are intent on making things interesting. They are leading the Cleveland Indians five to one in the sixth inning right now at Fenway Park. So with Tampa Bay losing earlier today in Detroit, a Boston victory tonight over Cleveland would continue their efforts to try and take the division. Oh, this is close. Pat, you can. No, no. Maybe on the rebound, huh? <laughs> No chance. Is your little cord long enough? If he hits one, like it won't. No, I can't stretch out. You're, you're okay. We are tethered to these green seats. Can't get the uni dirty. <laughs> <laughs> There's not enough room here to kind of like fall down here. To There's a walk to Scudero. You know, you sit down at this level and you realize you have to pay attention at all times. Oh, yeah. That's why they make those announcements, right? 
This is right about the place I used to sit when I was a ball boy at the X. Really? And you know the pitchers would warm up. They had the bullpens down the lines. There, right, right. And I used to stand in front of the, the catcher there to protect them. And at about 16 years old, you get a 95 mile an hour pitch coming back off the bat the other oh, way. Oh. And you got to protect the catcher. That was your job at that time. Did you throw with the outfielder? Flew, uh, yeah, through the right fielder. The I visiting might, team right fielder. I might have thrown. I probably did. Because I played right field at <laughs> the X. Rios with a fly ball to right field. There's Nady. And there's the third out. Two more on the board, though, for the Blue Jays. They've got a 7 to 2 lead. You're watching Blue Jays baseball on Rogers Sports Night. We'd like to thank everyone that helped support the Blue Jays Care Foundation in 2008. The Jays Care is working to ensure that children in need have the opportunity to make positive choices in life. Over half a million dollars was committed to organizations from across the greater Toronto area this year. For more information on Jays Care, please look at the Blue Jays website at bluejays.com. Still looking for that stray ball that we can auction off for the Jays care. <laughs> Here's a chance a left hander up at the plate Bobby Abreu. And a roller to second. Ingrid scoops the ball and throws to Overbay. The last night A.J. Burnett pitched what could be his final game for the Blue Jays. Received a nice ovation after he came off the hill. And today really gave a lot of credit to Roy Halladay for I think his word was his maturation this year winning 18 games and the two of them share lockers. It says he has meant so much to him. Uh, there was a day he was telling me earlier when the team was in Minnesota and he went up to Roy Halladay and says tell me what you think of me. What do what do I need to do to become a better player. Kind of describe me a little bit as that ball is caught by Overbay and Halladay says number one you worry about too many things you worry about this you worry about that your stuff is good stop worrying about all that and focus on the job at hand and number two throw strike one get ahead early throw strike one and then from that day on he's been fantastic what a difference I mean getting ahead in the count and then you look at when Cito came over and coincided with a pretty good run but I think mm -hmm. Cito has a really nice way of dealing with guys and you look at what happened in the ninth inning yesterday as an example. It shifted to the right and now Inglet throws out Jason Giambi. That's why they set up the defense that way when the Giambino comes up. In three years as teammates, Halliday and A.J. Burnett have excelled as starters for the Blue Jays. Keep in mind that Burnett won 10 games in his first two seasons combined. He was on the disabled list so many times. But you know, they have meant so much to the top of the rotation. And if you go around and you talk to some of the visiting teams, they know how good those two are at the top of, of that starting staff. And how dominant they can be, and how they can win series. You win two out of three when you get those guys going. Johnny Damon has talked about it on a couple of occasions this year, saying, "Hey, had the Jays been able to make the playoffs, you really have to like their chances in a short series in the first round of the divisional series." And because of those two guys, those two guys out there. Well, there's Edward Ramirez coming in in relief of David Robertson. We have talked the last couple of nights about the power arms that the Yankees have out of the bullpen. This is a little change of pace right here with Edouard Ramirez. You see a lot of the strikeouts from Ramirez. He gets his a different way. He's got an outstanding changeup. Just enough fastball to get in on you, but his outfit is that good changeup. Which that Vernon Wells has had no trouble with here tonight. 
Well, as the line score tells you, the Blue Jays enjoy a 7-2 to two lead as they bat in the bottom of the sixth. I'm Jamie Campbell with Pat Tabler and Sam Cosentino from the TD Canada Trust Comfort Zone tonight. Watching Vernon Wells, who has homered, singled, and reached on an air. He's driven in four. There was an interesting episode in the game last night that I read about in one of the New York papers. Robinson Cano in the third inning hit a comebacker that you might recall hit Burnett. Yeah. And one of the players on the Yankees turned to the trainer of the Yankees, Gene Monahan, and said, go out there and look at him. Make sure he's okay. And the inference being that the Blue Jays, excuse me, the Yankees are salivating at the prospect of signing A.J. Burnett. They haven't made it a secret. No. Nope. <laughs> they, they would be interested. Pretty outward about it. Which could be tampering. In fact, the man at the top of the food chain, in fact, has made it very clear that they'd like to have him on staff. There are a host, though, of free agent pitchers who have signed big term contracts with the Yankees and failed miserably. In fact, the guy who started tonight for New York is a prime example of the pressures you tend to face when playing in front of 53,000 every night. Well, there'll be some other suitors. I mean, should AJ opt out of his contract, and by all accounts, he's going to do that. There are going to be several other suitors besides the Yankees. But once you get the Yankees into the mix, it usually helps drive the price up a little mm -hmm. bit. I think every agent wants to get the Yankees involved in any negotiations for their client. Ramirez strikes out Wells. I think there's going to be some pressure too from the from the Players Association for him to, to opt out and, and to seek more money. They'll be thinking about that, you know, and I know the agent, they'll be in contact with the agents and wanting to, to get the best deal because those kind of free agent deals kind of they drive up the price for everybody. For everybody. For the CC Sabathias, for the Derek Lowe's, the for the Ben Sheets. Yep. You know, all those guys are going to benefit from whatever contract AJ Burnett received. Adam Lynn. They sit right field. You know, you have to think that Sabathia will get somewhere in the neighborhood of a Johan Santana type of deal, six years and 137 million. Perhaps from this team right here, the New York Yankees. That's uh, probably the starting point. You know, and that, then the dominoes start to fall and everybody else kind of fits in. And they're slotted after that. And who's to say they wouldn't, they won't go after two starters? I mean, you think of the guys that are coming off the books there. Jombie's uh, neighborhood a $20 million contract. He's going to come off the books. Abreu possibly. Messina. Pettit. You know, you're talking about Bono. 50, 60, 70 million dollars worth of contracts coming off the books for the Yankees. Not to mention all the revenue generated from moving in uh -huh. to the new Yankee Stadium. And not making the playoffs this year. So this New York team will have a vastly different look next season. There, there's a good chance that that could happen. When I played for the Yankees in their minor league system, whenever they went to a new city, they wanted to make a statement and win. They would load up those teams and usually had good good uh, seasons. I think the same thing is going to happen next year in New York from moving into that new state, new Yankee stadium. I think the Yankees are going to want to make a statement, and I think they'll spend whatever it takes to, to help them win. You know, and if you're the Blue Jays in that case, you really have to stay the course. And, and J.P. Ricciardi has talked all season long about how confident he feels in his team should this team have hit better earlier in the year, that they might have been in the run for a playoff spot. And if he truly feels that confident and is able to tweak uh, the roster a little bit, maybe with a, a shortstop position type player and, and at least one or two starting pitchers, then you have to stay the course if you truly believe that that's your way to make it into the playoffs. But you know what worries me about next year, and I'm sure it worries them too. He said that before Sean Markham went out. Dustin McGowan. And then if AJ opts out, there's your two, three, four. I mean, you have to replace that. That is a monumental task. Huge. 
few. Lots of decisions to be made. Cheeto Gaston was saying today that you need 92 or 93 wins to assure yourself of a postseason spot. The Blue Jays right now are sitting on 83. So the difference between where they're at now and what a postseason position might cost them is so subtle. It's about 10 games, 10 or 11 games. And, and I'm sure strikes out. you could go back over the course of the season and pick 10 games that you thought you should have won. I can pick 10 right now. I mean, it happens in baseball. It's 162 games that's going to happen. And there are surely some games that the Blue Jays won where maybe they had no business winning as well. But I bet you the number of games where they felt like they should have won probably outnumbers those in which they didn't think they should have won. Mm -hmm. Just ask Doc. He might have had four <laughs> or five by himself, right? It's three or four complete game losses in a row. Mm -hmm. Scott Rowland one for three this evening. He scored in the fifth inning. And he pops that one up. And it's headed for the seats down in right field. Just out of reach of Xavier Nady. The Yankees were first to score in the third inning. A two out double by Gardner. Put him at second base. Robinson Cano brought him in with a base hit to right field. But Toronto got it back in the third on a two run home run by Vernon Wells. They scored three times in the fourth, two more in the fifth, and have a seven to two lead in the bottom of the sixth inning. Edouard Ramirez on the hill for New York. Two strikes on roll in the pitches high. A ball and two now. Roland's under contract for two more seasons. There was a point about two months ago where he wondered if he would play Major League Baseball ever again. He grounds the ball to Betamit. He gets the force at second. And six innings are now in the books here in Toronto. It's the Blue Jays seven and the Yankees two. You're watching Blue Jays baseball on Rogers Sportsnet. Back underway at Rogers Center as Halliday delivers the pitch to Wilson Betamit to begin the seventh inning. Roy's pitching a dandy here, allowing two runs on six hits in his 33rd start of the year. At least six innings again. 19 consecutive starts now that Halliday has thrown at least six innings. The last time he didn't throw six innings, that was against the Chicago Cubs back in June. Covers one gun. You know, we, we also talked about Halliday beating the, the Yankees four times this year. He's going to throw it. First of all, we're going to take a look at Parrish. He was getting some throwing in on the side. He's going to throw on Saturday, so he's just getting some, some work in before they take off for Baltimore. But Halliday has beaten New York four times this year. Did a little research. And I try to find out has anybody beaten the Yankees five times in a year? The last time it happened, Luis Tian, when he was a member of the Boston Red Sox in 1974, beat the Yankees five times. Luis That's the last Tiot. time. The last time someone beat the Yankees five times in one year. And they started every four days, so he would have had those opportunities. Probably, yeah. yeah. And it, it, in the same league, so same they played league. him a thousand times yeah. back then. So Doc doing something to the Yankees that haven't been done in a long time. It's important. It's important to get those 20 wins. I mean, he's only ever done it once in his career, and I can tell you from all the people that I talk to around the organization that Doc has been ready for this start for a good two days. I mean he had his bags packed to Baltimore two days ago saying and, and thinking that he wanted no distractions when he got to the yard today that he was focused on one thing and I saw him rally up Greg Zahn and Brad Arnsberg as it started to get a little loud in the clubhouse he took him into the, one of the back board rooms and said all right let's sit down and figure out our scouting report and how we're going to go about attacking these Yankees hitters here today. His focus is almost frightening in its intensity. And to be around him on the days he pitches. Frightening good. Frightening good. Yes. Yes. I mean, that's how 
of professional acts, right? He gets after it. Uh, our buddy Ryan back here was trying to follow him with the camera out of the clubhouse. <laughs> and Doc said, oh, he not got tonight. <laughs> You got you got the uh, the you got evil the eye. You got the Heisman. <laughs> <laughs> two and two, and a strikeout. Dodge is rolling right along. A one, two, three, seventh. He struck out three, and is dealing against the Yankees tonight in search of his twentieth win of the year. Game review, Vernon Wells has made an impact with the bat, but this game is all about Roy Halladay and his excellence against the Yankees. And he is on quite a roll right now. Three up, three down in the seventh, the sixth. A walk, an infield single in the fifth, and Halladay is really, he sees the finish line here tonight. And he's going to sprint across that finish line. As he pitches with the lead into the bottom of the seventh, new pitcher for the Yankees. Their fourth reliever here tonight, Humberto Sanchez. A hard throwing right hander, one of the pitchers that they got from the Detroit Tigers in the Gary Sheffield trade. He has battled some arm problems in the last couple of years, but. Uh, now gets a chance to show his wares here at the big league level. The pitcher's body, those big powerful legs. Sanchez in the bottom of the seventh inning. Faces Travis Snyder, Greg Zahn, and Joe England. The Blue Jays in their final home game of the year. Enjoy a 7 and 2 lead. They've ripped up 12 hits so far this evening. Three of them from the young man you look at now. Snyder, three for three. He's driven in one, scored twice, two singles and a double. And has raised his average to 344. He belts that ball to left field, but under it is the left fielder Cabrera. And Snyder's out for the first time this evening. What do you think, Jamie? Pat, have you seen enough of Snyder to think that he should start next year with the club, with the big club? Well, he has all the tools to do that. I think that might come down to a organizational decision about maybe starting him in AAA to kind of keep the clock from starting on his free agent years. Is that a yes or a no? I've seen enough of him <laughs> that he can play. Do I think he's going to start the year? No. Jamie, what do you think? I'm of the opinion that there might be a little triple A time required. A la Evan Longoria. Didn't hurt him. Yeah, all of about a week. Yeah. You know? But, you know, the point being is you hear so many stories about young prospects like Snyder who come up and for three or four weeks have outstanding numbers and then give them a full time job at the big leagues and the pitchers eventually figure them out and make their adjustments. And you hear all kinds of stories about how that can really shatter their confidence. And I think that's the last thing the Blue Jays want to do to Travis Snyder is to put him in a position where he fails more often than not. Remember what happened to Adam Lind earlier this year when he came up for a brief stint and went 0 for 25 and was sent right back down to Triple A. 
I don't think it's a matter of confidence with Travis. I, no. it, it's going to come down to can he get the required number of at-bats where he can play every day. And if he can get the number of at-bats here, be it playing left field, right field, moving around, DHing, first baseman, whatever the case may be, then I think he starts the season with the big league club. He doesn't come up here to sit. No, he can't. He can't yeah. do that. So you have to find a place for him to play. I mean, he's got to play at least, you would think, five times a week in order to get the number of at-bats required. And, and like you say, Pat, it's a big investment taking away some of that free agent time. If, if you uh, if you solely go on talent and does he belong here, yes. But I think baseball, there's more to it than that within the organizations. I think that's a big part of it. So we'll see as the, the winner goes along. You know, the other thing is, does he in the lineup give you the best chance to win on an everyday basis? And if Cito Gaston and Gene Tennis and Dwayne Murphy, should all of those guys come back and J.P. Ricciardi get together and think that he being in the lineup gives you the best opportunity to win every day, he'll be here. And that won't happen until the end of March next year, right? We'll go through spring training and see, uh, see what type of spring he has. And think of the advantage of playing at this level with this team for an entire season for a young man like Travis Snyder. How many times do we look at the Blue Jay bench and see him sitting next to Cito Gaston when he's about four spaces away from hitting, talking about pitch selection, talking about what he might expect to see when he's at the plate? I mean, that's the kind of education yeah. you might not get in AAA every day. Well, Cito's brilliant in, in that regard. And Pat, you've been there to see that. I mean, he can call pitches unbelievably well. He has a really good idea of what the opposing pitcher wants to do to get you out. And if you can go up armed with that knowledge, boy, does it improve your chances. Well, also, he, he can pick out little nuances from the pitcher that, you know, hey, when he does this, he's throwing that. Tip pitches always. Oh, he's, he's great at that. that. Yeah. He taught Carlos Delgado and Sean Green that method several years ago and it served those guys well continues to serve Carlos well and serve Sean well throughout his career. Sanchez having a little trouble with Joe Inglet. He puts him on back to back walks in the seventh inning. We have seen the difference guys in the rehiring of Cito Gaston. It's there statistically. It's there visually. You can see that this is a better team since he came aboard on June 20th. I still scratch my head as to why he couldn't find work for 11 years. Well, I know part of the reason that, of why that is. Uh, and, and I think Cito gave the best answer today because he was asked that question. And he said, I think you're meant to be where you are at. And it sounds, it doesn't sound like very much. But he said, at the time I was at home and playing golf and traveling and, and enjoying life with my wife, that, at that time, is what I was meant to be doing. Mm -hmm. And me sitting in the dugout since the 20th of June is what I was meant to be doing at this time. Right. Didn't he have some offers? Was he talking he about He had one offers? offer in L.A., and I know when Ozzie Guillen got the job in Chicago that Cito Gaston had been considered for that job as well and obviously Ozzy had gotten the job he'd been in the organization a long mm -hmm. time and there was a, a, a sniff from the Dodgers and I really just think he felt he he wanted the time off and I think Jamie you can really see it in how happy he is back to be doing the job he's doing it's a real passion for him to manage he wanted to be offered a job lock stock and barrel he didn't want to have to compete for one he didn't want to be a candidate for a managerial job. He wanted an organization to say, you have you're our manager. It's yours. Sign he, here. He yeah. deserved that. He right. deserved that. That's exactly right. And he never right. got that. He deserved that right. And that opportunity was never offered to him. Goes oh. back to what I said earlier, that I, I don't think he got enough credit for winning those championships with that team here. It's not as easy as writing the lineup card no. out every day. As much no. as some of the viewers and the listeners may think that, Pat, having been inside that situation, and you can stock a team with star players, and, and it still doesn't work out. I mean, you look at the Yankees team. They're, they're going to finish in third or fourth place, depending on what happens here. So many things can happen over six months of baseball. And to steer your team on the straight and narrow, getting them ready, Scudero drops in another base hit. 
In comes Zahn. Scudero drives in a run, and the Blue Jays are really opening it up here against the New York Yankees. Nice soft swing right here from Scooter. Watch him cut a swing down with a couple of strikes. He just kind of services the ball into right field. No chance for Navy to get Griggs off. He reads it right off the bat. RBI for Marco Scooter. He and Giambi were old teammates in Oakland. He's a popular guy, Scooter. Everywhere you go, where he's played with somebody, they all love him. <laughs> he's a good ball player, too. He does a lot of things the right way, and I can, a particular bat earlier in the game yesterday with a man of first nobody out, very intentionally hitting that ball to the right side and moving mm -hmm. the runner over. He does a lot of those things that, that go unnoticed. Joe Inglet, yeah, he led off the, the game with a double last night. Marco. And that's when it was. Yeah. That's right. The double and then Marco. You could see in his very first swing. He fouled the ball off right field line. Stayed behind it. next to it yep. bats. He made sure to get England over. And turned out. Get him on. Get him over. Get him in. And it worked out for the Blue Jays to take that one nothing lead early in the game yesterday. One ball and one strike on the ground. Taylor made for two. And that's the end result. Yet another run for the Blue Jays in support of Roy Halladay's bid for 20 victories. <laughs> Commentator clothing is provided by Zizenia. Statistical information provided by Stats Inc. What a beautiful shot that is. The crew going to work. Francisco Cervelli at the dish. Now Sam, he was involved in probably the defining moment for the Tampa Bay Rays in this spring year. training. Great spring point. training. And that's why it missed all that time. Is it a broken leg? Uh, broken, broken wrist. Broken wrist. wrist. He was at the uh, plate working behind home plate when Elliot Johnson in a spring game of the Tampa Bay Rays came hard around third and crashed into him breaking his wrist and tempers flare the Yankees thought it was quite an aggressive slide at home and they did not like the fact as he waits and misses striking out that in a spring game when things are supposed to be a little relaxed one of the Rays had knocked out one of their best catching prospects and then a few outings later I think it was Shelby Duncan or Shelly Duncan, Shelley Duncan who started a uh, an on field fight when he came in spikes up against Akinori Uemura and they cleared the benches and Johnny Gomes got involved. It was messy. And I think that's why I call it the defining moment for the Tampa Bay Rays because I think it galvanized them and I think it kind of just proved that that's how Joe Madden's team were going to play spring training exhibition first game of the season playoffs whatever we are going to play hard and we are going to play to win. Joe Girardi was really critical. What did you think of the play, Pat? I think I, uh, I, I didn't see the play as Overbay and Halliday team up for the second out here. I, I didn't see the play. It, but from everything that I have read, it wasn't malicious. It was just a hard collision at the plate. Do you think it was out of line, James? I didn't. I saw a replay of it. I didn't see it obviously broadcast, but uh, again, it's it's like Pat said. It seemed to be one of those instances where it was just a hard play. But I think the Yankees' contention was, why is this happening in a spring game? And it the matter. The, well, the Tampa Shouldn't Bay Rays said, well, wait a second. We've got a young player here who's going hard because he's trying to get a big league job. So don't tell us how to play the game. When are you hurt most in this game when you let up and you don't do things properly and you don't go all out a lot of guys get hurt yes. not going all out and so the argument can be made for that as well. Hey we're going hard right from the right from the first pitch on through. I don't care with you. when it is you know what in what game I think you play the game the right way and I'd be upset if if a guy didn't try and score a run. I don't care yeah. when it is. 
And if the catch is there to block the plate and the ball's meeting the plate at the same time, you've got to run him over. You're not going to lay down and just let him tag you out. You've got to run him over. Well, we're watching from the TD Canada Trust Comfort Zone as Roy Halliday works with two out in the eighth inning against Robinson Cano. What a terrific outing so far. He's only needed 88 pitches. They're on their feet for the pitch to Cano. And it's grounded down to Overbay. Cano is saying that he found it off his foot. We're waiting for a ruling from Mike Camuro, the home plate umpire, but the Blue Jays are running off the field. And the Blue Jays appreciate the fans. They come out between innings to salute those here at Rogers Center. More than 44,000 on hand this evening. The Blue Jays enjoy an 8 to 2 lead. As yet another new pitcher comes in for the New York Yankees. Daryl Rasner on the hill now for New York. Bullpen has been good for the Yankees this year. And I think that's going to be a strong point for them. Rasner 5 and 10 with a 538 earned run average. They've got some good arms out there over their last 14 games. The relievers are 5 and 0 with 5 saves and ERA of just one. Bullpen for the Yankees have struck out 506 batters this year, which is the best ratio of the AL and the most in the AL. So they have something to build on for next year to the Yankees. Tonight, Rasner is the fifth reliever for Joe Girardi. Vernon Wells is the first hitter for the Blue Jays in the eighth inning. He's had a wonderful night. Four driven in. He's homered his 18th of the year. I like the longstanding tradition the Yankees have of not putting last names on the back of their jerseys, both home and away. Mm -hmm. There's number 43 Rasner deals. A breaking ball hit to Betamy at third. I think the Red Sox at home don't have their surnames on the back. Why, but why, they do why, on the road. why do you like that? Just tradition. Tradition. As Adam Lynn steps in. I read a story the other day about the 70s when Major League Baseball kind of relaxed what you could put on the back of your jersey. And the San Francisco Giants had an infielder, Johnny LeMaster. Sure. Who was so tired of being booed at Candlestick Park for one game in 1979? He had boo written <laughs> on the back of his jersey. So he thought they were calling his name? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Try and get that on my suit. <laughs> Johnny from Paintsville, Kentucky. Johnny LeMaster, you know that. Yeah, played with him. I think I played with everybody. You did. <laughs> How was the babe, Tab? Babe's dead. Well, you were talking about no, when you played with him. Oh. <laughs> you were talking about playing with Louis Tion earlier tonight, yes. did you not? Yeah. In uh, Winter Bowl? In Winter Bowl. El Tionte. Giambi takes the ball off the turf and gets Lynn. And he introduced you to some interesting cuisine. Yeah, he gave me my first taste of rattlesnake. <laughs> and really? It's excellent. Yes. It's good for you, too. Isn't it bony? Well, you skin it, you know, and you make it into a powder and you put it on your food and you eat it. Thank you, no. It's good for you. It <laughs> might be. Now, how can you say that if you've never had it? Huh? <laughs> That fourth voice is Bob Layden, who is our senior floor director.
Good to have you around this year, Bob. Inside on Overbay, one ball, two strikes. There what's he is, Scott the Kirk lovable one. What's Scott Carson's joke about Bob? He's so old that his first payment in any job was fire. <laughs> <laughs> Bouncing ball picked up by the shortstop ransom and a one two three inning. Roy Halliday comes out in the ninth inning looking for a complete game and number 20 on the year. Looking down from up in the CN Tower as Roy Halliday comes in to face the Yankees in the ninth inning. He has been his typical self tonight. 89 pitches. Hasn't really allowed the Yankees to do much of anything. And so he begins the inning in search of his 20th win of the year and ninth complete game of the season. It is well within reach now. He has retired 10 in a row. And again, and he got the lead. In the third inning, and then the Blue Jays tacked on three more in the fourth inning. He seemed to just turn it up a notch. He sees the finish line, and he's going hard. Two strikes on Abreu, who is 0 for 3. Dock into his windup. And a breaking ball swung on and missed. A.J. got Bobby Abreu three times last night. And Halliday gets him with a curveball. Still got that good snap in the ninth inning. Since 2003, Roy Halliday has 34 complete games, easily the most in the big leagues. There's a shot into the corner. And there's out number two. It, in fact, those 34 complete games is higher than 20 clubs' team totals. For the same period. There are 20 clubs that don't have 34 complete games since 2003. Halliday's done it all by himself. We got to stand for this one, gentlemen. One out of way as Johnny Damon pinch hits. No wonder I didn't get that baseball I was looking for. They only hit four fly balls tonight. Boy, he is just pounding the lower half of the strike zone, isn't he? I can't recall a ball above the waist. This will do it. 20 victories for Roy Halliday. As Derek Jeter said, he's the best in the business. He certainly did it against the Yankees this year. Fifth time that he has beaten New York this year. Second career 20 win season. And look at AJ. That is awesome. Welcome back to the Rogers Center in the 8-2 final for the Blue Jays and Roy Halladay is uh, the man of the hour and Doc uh, you talk about 20 wins how important was it for you to get to that 20 win mark. Um, you know it's uh, it's not it's something you said is it. Oh he got him AJ got him he never get the Doc and he's liable to fight back and he will. <laughs> <laughs> Doc, you're a trooper for hanging around. I appreciate it. You know, they really don't like to mess with you a whole lot, and I can understand that. But A.J. had to get you at some point. 
Yeah. But how important, you know, coming into this game, I talked to some of the guys around the room, how locked in you were. And it's a tough day, you know, guys are ready to go on the road. How important was it for you to get this win here tonight? Um, yeah, it, it's it's a team thing. Um, you know, it's uh, it's something you can't do without every guy in that clubhouse. So, um, you know, that means a lot to me. But, uh, you know, it's something you don't set out as a goal. It's just, you, you know, you, you're fortunate. And, uh, you know, I, I had a great team behind me this year and, and a great bullpen. And, uh, you know, staff and everything, it, it makes a big difference. So, um, you know, very thankful. You look at the 2003 season, your Cy Young Award winning season as you towel off here a little bit. How would you compare this year to that year? Um, you know, I try not to compare them. I, I think that, uh, you know, it's it's hard to do. I, I, you know, you just kind of keep them separate. Um, it was a fun year for me. Uh, you, you know, we, we made things close there for a while. But, uh, you know, it's just something I've never looked back and, and compared. Uh, you know, for me, the past is the past. And, and, you know, you try and focus on the future and, and what you're moving forward with. Well, Doc, it's been a pleasure to watch you. And I thank you for your time as always. I know you work hard and your time is valuable. Thanks for joining us all season long here on Sportsnet. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. The seventh time a Blue Jay has won 20 in a single season. Roy Halladay gets it in his final start here against the Yankees. And so Sportsnet Connected comes your way next with Sean McCormick and Martin Geyer. They'll be talking all about Doc's 20. And we'd like to say thank you to all of you for watching. For Scott Carson, Pat Tabler, and Sam Cosentino, I'm Jamie Campbell. Good night from Toronto.